today, I want to come to you about faith. Where is your faith? Faith in God? Faith in family? Faith in institute? Faith in yourself. Faith is what holds us together. Our faith. What do you believe in? I want to come to you from Exodus chapter 1, verse 15, down to 16. Two verses that explain the power of faith, church. Many of us, we're challenged. How much faith do you have as we out here marching for justice? We wonder, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? But I have news for the church. Where is your faith? That's where we matters. I go to Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of them, and he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them up on the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Isn't that kind of the unbalance that we have in society today? And a lot of people get caught up because their faith isn't in God. Their faith becomes in the king. They believe in the king. They believe in Pharaoh. During those days, church, Pharaoh, the king, told the midwives if the Hebrew women have a son, kill him. But if he have a daughter, then she shall live. Do you know today, with all that's going on in, in society, it's hard to explain today to a woman that you have a back. If you hold the door for her many times, she won't let you have that grace and tell you, you go. If you stop to fix a tire, she would rather sometimes sit on the side of the road and wait for the services to come than to trust that you can help her in many ways. This is the path that we're going down. That you can't even be a helpmate to your woman. But isn't that the same thing that they did? That they were trying to get past the Hebrew women, Pharaoh? When he said, and see, a lot of Bible token sisters that go to church every day seem to miss this part. He said that if it be a boy, kill him. But if it be a girl, let her live. All right, church. So we know that something is unbalanced. The Hebrew midwives, who at that time probably couldn't even read Egyptian. Or if they could, they could read just, you know, grandma. But their faith, church, was beyond their education capacity. 
we're dealing in a society today where our women have great education, but they still miss this point. What is the point, Reverend? The point is that Pharaoh said, if it be a boy, kill him if it's a girl. Let him live. That's an imbalance. So, if the Hebrew women would have killed uh, the boy child and allowed only the girl child to live, what would be, what would happen after a while, 10, 20 years, with all these girls? They were going to be what they call in war, war booty. Men could, of different species, could run amok with them and play with them because they had no protection. Not that they couldn't get together and fight against them, but then you still have the uh, low capacity of men because you listen to Pharaoh. But these Hebrew sisters, these midwives, did not listen to Pharaoh. They did not listen. Because they, their faith, church, was in God. That's what their faith was. So, the Hebrew midwife said to Pharaoh, but the midwives, they fear God. And did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but save the men children alive. See that? They need God over Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a system going on, making bricks and keeping people in slavery. But these women, in whatever educational capacity they were, they, their faith superseded their education church. Their faith alone superseded it, see, because they believe in the will and the strength and of God over Pharaoh. How many people today can look past all the materialistic things of the world? All the right now and the flashlights of, of any government and give just their heart to God. That's a hard one to get amen? But these women, these Hebrew women, they did it. The king called on them. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives to come in. And he said unto them, listen, he talked as a God. Why have ye done this thing? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women, come on now, are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are and are delivered the midwives come into in unto them. They are already delivered. Therefore God will deal with the midwives, Pharaoh said. And the people multiplied. God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied. Come on now. And the people multiplied and waxed very mightily. This is what we have to do in the situation that we're in even today. Our women has to help us. And we have to help them too. We lose track of them. We lose track, church, of the many things. We lose track, church. We get caught up and we forget one thing. 
Muhammad Ali, the boxer. And you probably would you probably would have never got any acclaim as a great poet if he wasn't a boxer because even he said he wasn't that good in high school. He basically got good because he won the Olympics. He said in the shortest poem I think ever written, me, we. How many times, church, or how many of us gonna take on me, we? If I go, you go. If you go, I go. We are one in this thing. Check we one. Let us not let Pharaoh mess with our faith. Where is your faith, church? Is it in God? Is it in man? Is it in women? Is it in materialistic things? The Bible says faith without works, and I'm sure you know the rest. When are we going to start working? See, see, some people say that you have, you are as off course as you can be, and you can never come back. That's not true. Once you take a look at the situation, church, then you have to make an election with yourself. Where am I going to cast my vote? In less or a little over 13 months from now, we're going to have to cast our vote in this nation for a new president. It's not hot now. It's getting warm. But by January, it's going to be hot. By May of next year, 2024, it's going to be burning up, baby. The whole summer is going to be hotter than it ever been. Not heat from the weather. Heat from this election. Everything we can do has to, we have to be bold up in our faith. Some people have faith in this candidate, and some have faith in that candidate. But the point that I'm trying to bring home to you and explain to you is that we have to apply our faith. And once we apply our faith, the whole game change. Convince a fool against his will. He sometimes remains the same thing still. But if you can convince a wise man huh, of his wrong, and he decides to make a turnaround, that's what it is. It's called Retooling. We have to retool from every angle. We put faith in a lot of things that we thought that we needed. And that's why sometimes in our cities that our kids are running amok. And a lot of these kids that's running this way are middle class kids. Because we put our faith in the other things. And we did not drill our kids on tomorrow. Where's your faith? I pray and I hope you pray along with me, church. Pray for the faith of those midwives that would not listen to Pharaoh the king. Would not listen to him at all. Because they were the beginning of the game that was going to be played on the devil, which is Pharaoh. The game that was getting rid of it. See, they were just by that little action there, the whole setup was coming for Pharaoh. Say, Pharaoh, 
didn't know at that time hmm, that he would be raising one of them kids as his as his uh, step grandson. We talk about that later. See, Pharaoh didn't know that, but because of the resistance and the faith of these women, it started something. It sparked something, church. That's what they did. We have to reignite our faith today. It's almost like, I don't know how true it is, church. I, I heard the story years ago. I want to believe it's true. It sounded like it could be true, but then it could be false. I heard of a plane, a 747, leaving Asia and flying high in the sky, 42,000 feet, something like that. And I heard of, I don't know how true it was, that the engines on the plane shut down for two hours. And the big old jumbo jet glide on his wings. It took him two hours to restart the engines. And in two hours, they restart the engines. And was able to make a safe landing in the United States. One day, I'll give you more information about that. We have to restart our engines, church. We have to pull up our sleeves. And we got to get ready. Let's uh, stop boxing with each other. Hmm? Let us stop uh, challenging one another and let us start building so we can give our kids something. Let us start building uh, so our kids can go to school and learn. Let us start building families again. Our faith. May the Lord be with you.